everyone and welcome back to the Rochelle Anna Miller YouTube channel. Today's card is featuring the Pinpin Hug and it's actually going to be a Christmas card. Um, also, it's going to be a shaker card, which is one of those cards that I don't make often and I love them. But I will just tell you why I don't make them often. It's just the difficulty with getting it on a picture. It truly really is. There is always like light that is reflecting in... Um, in the estate so I don't like photographing it and so therefore I, I actually avoid it but it's so fun and I really am glad that I did it today um, also during the making of this card I had two problems one you already saw I had this blob of ink that came out of my marker I don't use this combination often let alone I don't think I ever have used it so far um, so I didn't expect it, but as you can see, I used the colorless blender uh, to get rid of most of it. Um, in case it was a red marker, I think it was way harder, but it was kind of a light marker still. Um, and you can still see a bit of the ink that is, well, that soaked into the paper, but I will go over it with another marker, so that way you won't see it. So it's, it's doable. There is another mistake that happened, uh, but that's for later. It's actually mostly at the end of the video. Uh, but I'm so glad that I tried to fix it. Uh, it worked out great. Um, there is this thing that I definitely have. That's whenever I make a mistake, I most often think that it's ruined and I want to throw it away. Uh, but actually, it is kind of rewarding if you just try, try to fix it, and then if it if it succeeds then your card isn't wasted and all of the effort that you put into it if not then you tried it at least and you still can you can always start over but it's just nice to to be able to to recover from a tiny mistake so concerning the combination as i already said i don't think that i ever used this one but in case i did it's a shame that I don't use it more often, uh, but something that I tend to do whenever I have like a larger critter and a smaller one, like a baby and a big one, I tend to color the smaller one lighter than the bigger one. Now, that doesn't mean that you have to have like six or eight markers. Uh, like I did here, I actually just added one marker on top for the bigger one and it also helped because you have more... Uh, you have a bigger area to color in, so an extra marker can always be useful in that case. Um, but I actually repeated the complete combination of the little penguin and I just added the V28 and that just darkened the larger one uh, so that there is a difference between the two of them, but still they are matching pretty well because you just have the same markers that you use. So. That's a trick that I tend to do and it really helps me to keep everything matching with each other and still be different. So I'm adding a second layer to get my blend a bit better. Um, in case you are using a new combination and you're unsure about it, don't give up after the first layer because very often the first layer is really rubbish because your paper hasn't had any ink yet. It isn't saturated yet. There, there is still tons of things that you can do. Also, whenever my critters have like a belly, I tend to go with really soft markers, either from the combination itself when it's already soft or just in that same color family as I did here. So for the little bird, I tend to color my birds yellow. I don't know why, there are tons of <laughs> different kind of birds, but a bit of yellow on a card, it's joyful as well, so why not? So far, for me, this doesn't scream uh, Christmas yet, so I'm going to add red on all of the accessories, on the scarf, but also on the mug, um, just to, to have it more Christmassy. I don't know if that changes things for you, but for me, whenever I can use like a deep red, I'm always kind of in a Christmas mood. So to make sure which color combination I could use with this purplish color, because I haven't used it often or never yet, um, I, I took my hex chart here uh, to make sure that my combinations were, was working, but in the end I just went for the red. Can you ever go wrong with red for a Christmas card? I don't think so. So, I did that in, ca in case you don't have like a combination chart like or a Copic marker chart or another um, alcohol marker chart. 
to see which markers you already have there is also a free uh, one available on the Rochelle on the Miller website which is really cute uh, and handy uh, and you can also like uh, do combinations uh, on like balloons that she drew uh, really adorable so in case you want to have like an overview of your markers definitely check out the site they are free so really handy um, I just already had the hex chart so that's why I still use it um, but for my combinations I'm using the balloons by Rochelle Andler so here I'm just skipping each time um, one of the stripes and just having white and red you can also use other combinations you can fill them completely uh, that's all up to you of course so this red combination to be honest was my first red combination that I had uh, and it's still one that I, I easily grab towards uh, because it's a really deep warm red combination So I'm taking my time to do this because I say it often, um, I love a colorless blender. It helps me to color with my Copic markers. It's like a corrector. You can always uh, have a tiny boo-boo or a mistake and then you can push back the color. Now with the reds, it's kind of, it's a bit troublesome sometimes because it's really, it's like a really strong color. And most of the time I cannot fix all of my mistakes whenever it's with the red markers. So um, I tend to be extra careful whenever I'm coloring with my uh, red markers. To just make sure that I don't go outside lines or at least not too much. And here, as you could see, um, <clears throat> there was that, that blob in the beginning. And I really found that I could still see it. I don't think that if people didn't know they probably wouldn't see it but I could see it and that always bothers me so I just used that white jelly roll pen to just get it white completely and you cannot see it anymore for the sentiment I'm using uh, the big Christmas greeting from Hello Bluebird and I actually loved how the sentiment was placed on the acetate itself so I used the acetate to um, to line up the stamp uh, on my panel, which is the first time that I'm doing this, but if you like a specific layout or placement, why not? So I did that and I'm going to stamp it with some black ink. I am using the um, My Favorite Things Extreme Black Ink, just checking whether it was straight and then I'm going to add it. I am also going to stamp this multiple times to get a great impression, which is kind of well, handy <laughs> to have on your card. Definitely whenever creating a shaker card, make sure that your images and your sentiments underneath the acetate are really, well, are visible or are, are neat underneath because you will already have shaker material that can go on top of it and maybe get stuck. Uh, so just make sure that everything is, is there and clear. So to get my shaker, I actually used the um, A2 rectangle frame from My Favorite Things. I decked it uh, four times out of white and then once out of red. Um, the red cardstock that I'm using is the Cranberry cardstock. It's from Concord 9 and it's actually matching really, really well with the red combination uh, that I have here. So I'm just using some liquid glue to add all of the layers on top of each other. You can also use some foam tape uh, and then you don't have to cut, die cut uh, multiple um, frames. But in this case, I am going to use like a really thin um, shaker material. It's a chunky glitter from Long Foam. Um, and so I could just use a few layers of frame and then have my shaker material still be able to move. It just depends on the shaker material. If you want to use something more bulky, add more, more layers or just use a foam tape. So, mistake two uh, that is going to happen is the amount of chunky glitter that I added. It was really a ton. It was too much. I really have some difficulties um, figuring out how much shaker material my card needs. So in case there is like a trick 
uh, definitely put it in the comments because I need to know it. Um, it's each time the same thing and most of the time I cannot fix it and really with a shake of heart you put so much effort in it you don't want to throw it away at the end. So I added my acetate and then I, I shake the card to see uh, that everything was moving. But the thing was that whenever this card was going to be put on, on something vertically, there was so much shake material that you couldn't see like the complete image anymore. And I just wanted to have like the snow underneath it to be the shake material. And then of course you can shake it all the way. Uh, so I decided to try to peel off the acetate, just a corner. I took um, a paper towel here, uh, you will see it in a minute, and then I, I just poured some shaking material out. I didn't know whether that was going to work, whether the estate still wanted to close up afterwards, because of course there is some shaking material stuck now um, there, where I, there where I added the liquid glue. Um, but I tried it again, and this time like the shaking material is all on the bottom whenever I shake uh, and just put it down. So I will show it here. That is working for me. This way, at least you can see the word, the tiny um, penguin. Uh, I put the paper towel away, but in the end I was able to pour back uh, the chunky glitter in the jar. So I'm glad that it didn't waste it completely. Now I'm just adding that red frame and then my card is completely finished. I have created a shaker card that is for Christmas. I know it's early in the year, but I'm so glad that I already have Christmas cards ready. Uh, one Christmas card uh, ready. Um, so I hope that maybe this card can inspire you to already get going with your Christmas cards. Maybe you just want to make another card um, or another type of card with this digital stamp. It's all up to you. I hope at least that I could inspire you. Thank you so much for being here watching this video and I wish you all an incredible day. Bye!